Well, good afternoon, financial professionals. Dan Peterson, president here at E4 Insurance Services, and I'm welcoming you to The Brew, building relationships every week. Thanks for tuning in today. And for those joining The Brew for the first time, welcome. We like to start The Brewcast by celebrating today's national day. Today's national day, well, first, it's Tackle Kids Cancer Day. And uh, so let's remember that. But it's also National Online Learning Day. And the fact that you're here, we hope you have a great online learning experience as we bring you some important content. It's also National Double Cheeseburger Day. So load up that cheeseburger for lunch or National Linguini Day. Uh, it's also Cream de Mint Day. So grab a scoop of ice cream, a little cream de mint, and enjoy. Today on The Brew, as part of our Life Insurance Awareness Month, we welcome our very own Jeremy Vidmar, Regional Vice President. At E4 Insurance Services, we talk a lot about faith, family, and fun, and Jeremy has a really fun story about how he got into the insurance business. He was uh, in seminary in Rome taking a, uh, and ended up working for a young lady from Mott, North Dakota, and, and developed a romance, which is where the family came in, and he now resides in Mott, North Dakota, where they have five children, and I think one on the way, Jeremy. So uh, uh, thanks for being part of our team. Jeremy's going to take us back to basics. Uh, he's an accomplished insurance advisor. He got into the business with Knights of Columbus and made Million Dollar Roundtable uh, his very first year in the business. Jeremy's going to bring us uh, a topic, how much coverage do I need? And he's going to walk us through some needs analysis calculators to show you how to find that golden number for your clients. Feel free to use our chat box, share your thoughts when Jeremy is live. We'll be keeping out an eye out for your questions. At the end, we'll have an opportunity for you to talk with Jeremy and ask questions. Uh, but without any further uh, discussions, thank you for turning in. Jeremy, the mic is yours. Well, thanks, Dan. Um... You said good afternoon. I can say good morning still. I live in the, the great zone of mountain time, so we still got another hour of a uh, of morning here, but uh, it's good to be here. Um, I think, you know, our, the tagline at E4 Insurance Services is making life simple. Uh, so I thought I'd, you know, present a pretty simple concept. You know, it's Life Insurance Awareness Month, and one of the most simple, basic things that we can ask is how much life insurance... Uh, you want to group? Um, one of the, I think, no. you know, start, starting off with. Jeremy, can you, I, I had to mute the room. Um, if you can unmute and just back up a little bit. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, so I don't know where I left off, but the, our tagline at E4 Insurance Services is making life simple. Uh, so I thought I would just cover a very simple concept. Uh, especially during this Life Insurance Awareness Month. Um, and one of, you know, that concept is basically how much insurance do I really need? I mean, I know we all get that question uh, numerous times from people um, when we're trying to put a plan together. Um, starting off with just a, a, a little story. You know, as Dan said, I, um, I started with the Knights of Columbus. I was a captive agent. Um, and about a month after I was into the business, uh, there was a territory that wasn't being filled at the time. So my general agent at the time said, you know, there's a claim that needs to be done. Do you mind going over and handling this claim? Um, I said, sure. I mean, it's part of our business. Um, it was heartbreaking. It was a, it was a 38 year old widow who had lost her husband. Um, and he was uh, in his early forties. He had died of, of cancer and they had three young kids, uh, 10 and under. And, you know, I mean, as many of you know, the you know filling out the claim forms can just be uh, heartbreaking. Just hearing the story, how everything happened, and all of that. Um, what made it even worse was it wasn't my territory, so I didn't have access to his file um, before I went into it. Uh, as we got the claim paperwork done, you know, I realized that the uh, what the amount was going to be, and, and they sent me the check for just over just a little bit over three hundred thousand um, dollars. And I got to say, I was, I was upset. I mean, I was, 
I had just been with this, this woman who had lost her husband and now it was time to deliver the check. Um, and, you know, I, I had contacted the previous agent because I kind of knew him who was there. And I just said, you know what, why didn't this guy have more coverage? And he said, you know, I tried, uh, he, and, and I think he hadn't, you know, he honestly did try, but um, wasn't able to get to, to the number that really, I think they, they really needed with, with, uh, with the kind of uh, situation they were in with the, with the kids, especially. So, you know, the, again, the number one question we always get is how much coverage do I need? And I think before we even start talking about all the different ways that life insurance can serve our clients, that's the basic. Um, so how do we do that? I know we all have our own mental calculators kind of, or, you know, we have something we write down on paper, how we can um, figure this out. I just want to run through two things that I kind of think about in my own mind that I kind of run through with clients and then go to uh, one of the resources that we have uh, on our website at E4 uh, to help us figure that number out. So the first, the first calculator that I have, I call the Tempest Fujit uh, calculator. And um, with that, it's a Latin phrase. You know, Dan said I studied in, in Rome, so Latin was a language I knew. Tempest Fujit means time flies. The rest of the phrase is memento mori, so remember death. So this sounds really morbid, but that's the business we're in. You know, one of, one of the great authors I've uh, really looked up to, he says, make your decisions from your deathbed. And um, again, I know it sounds pretty morbid, but a lot of things are going to be happening at that point um, when we are laying there. You know, there's going to be things we're going to think about. There's going to be um, things that we need to do, maybe uh, we're going to be speaking to people that maybe we haven't spoken to a lot in a while. But one of those things I think personally that I'm going to be thinking about is, you know, am I taking care of those that I'm leaving behind? And so the first calculator is pretty simple, and it's just how much do I want to leave to those people that I'm going to that I'm going to leave behind? I mean, today, as Dan said, I have a young family. Um, I think you know that obviously plays a huge piece in a huge part in um, the number that we've kind of come up with. So that's the first one, the Tempest Fujit calculator, I call it. And you can kind of have fun with that, I guess, uh, and not sound so morbid when you uh, bring it up. The second one is, you know, the simple LIFE acronym. So L, liabilities and loans. How do we wipe those out and make things simple for those that we're leaving behind? Um, income replacement. You know, there's a lot of philosophies on this, I guess, or a lot of different where people sort of fall, but anywhere between five to 10 years of income replacement is, a, I think, a pretty good number. Um, F for funeral or final expenses. You know, a simple funeral even today is 15 grand and you throw in uh, some additional uh, medical bills or whatever, you know, your 25,000, 30,000, 50,000, I mean, helps us come to that number. And then the last E is for education or estate. Um, so again, you got kids, you want to educate them, you want to send them through school, um, or, you know, if the grandkids or you want to do some estate equalization, all those kind of things, that gives you a pretty good number. So again, if nothing else, this just serves as a reminder to us during this Life Insurance Awareness Month that these are kind of some concepts that we really need to return to as financial uh, professionals with the clients that we serve. Um, I want to just kind of, I want to have a little fun with this, I guess, um, go over to the calculator on our website. Um, I'm going to stop sharing this and move over, let's see here, uh, to the calculator. You can see here's our website. Let me go all the way down to the bottom, um, go to the life insurance calculator here. And I'm going to, so I'm actually going to do this calculator, but I'm going to do it for my wife. So, and again, I'm not going to put her birthday, I know her birthday, by the way, but um, I'm going to make up a birthday. Just, you know, I know this is going out to the world, so don't want everybody to know all of our personal details. Um, one of the things that I'll say about the, a calculator as well is the importance of letting the client put the numbers in. Um, it's easy for us to sit on the other side of the desk and plug the numbers in, spit the result out of the printer, hand it to them and say, well, this is what you need. Uh, when they actually fill the numbers in, you know, they have to take ownership of not only the numbers in, but the numbers out. And so it makes them realize, oh, I really do need to, uh, to add a little bit more coverage. Um, so again, we're going we're gonna to do my wife. This will be fun. See where, see where we're at. So 
female, immediately you can kind of see up here the insurance name. Final expense, 15 grand. Um, how old are you? Again, I know her birthday, but I'm going to make one up. So uh, let's say the 24th of April. This is kind of fun piece too. So if I want to make her look really old, we, you know, the image kind of follows. It's kind of fun. Um, but she's young and hip and cool. So she's 85, let's say. Um, she's definitely married to me. Lucky for her. Um, <laughs> The annual take home. So here's this is this is where it gets kind of interesting. So my wife runs a part time consulting business. She makes twenty grand, let's say a year. She's also a part time librarian. She makes about fifteen grand at that. She's a part time Uber driver. She's a part time laundry service uh, person. She's a cook. She cleans house. She's also a nurse. She does that just in her spare time. And then she's she's a secretary for me basically. So. I'm going to say a hundred grand is what her take home pay is. And in case uh, you didn't get that, my wife stays at home and takes care of all of the kids. This doesn't even compare to how much it would actually take to replace um, her, but we'll start there. So, um, you know, anywhere between five and 10 years, I'd say let's pick the middle. So let's say seven years. We own our home. Um, Let's just say 250 is our mortgage right now. This is kind of fun. Okay, so he said I have five and a sixth on the way. So we actually have three little ones, including the, the one on the way. And then school age, we'll say three. So I have six kids that are all eight years and younger. So there you go. I'm going to say with that amount of kids, we're not going to pay for the education. Um, Debt, we've done pretty well. So let's say 50,000. Um, let's say how much money, how many ass assets investments do we have? Let's say 300,000. And then current, well, I'm in the insurance business, so I feel like I've taken out quite a bit on her. So 1.25 on her. And we're not feeling charitable today, so we're gonna pass on that. Oh. I still need a million 140 on her. So it looks like I'll be going to a Symmetra Swift term after this and uh, maybe take out a little bit more insurance on her. So this is just, this is one of the resources we have with E4. I think it's, uh, you know, again, return back to basics, make us realize, uh, you know, ask these initial questions, the basic questions about um, the kind of needs that our clients have. Um, and we can kind of come up with a number again. Now I feel like I have my wife way underinsured. So there you go. I own it. Dan, any, yeah, any questions or follow up with that? Yeah. Well, why don't you just even quick cl click on the get a quote in seconds and uh, show what happens. Um, you know, this is where you would enter just a few yeah. deal details in. And uh, you can enter your own email there. I'm not a very fast typer, so you put me on the spot. Let's yeah, that's here. all right. No. So this goes even into some of the health uh, questions health. And, and starts to how many years you want to be covered for. Um, you can obviously select a 10-year, a 15-year, and so on. So we're going to say the 1.15. Here we go. Whoa. So we found a premium. And if they want to do a full comparison, they can even go in and look at the comparison. This doesn't have all of our carriers on it that mm -hmm. you would get um, if you ran it with um, inside of the quote, inside of the eight advisor portal when you log in, but it has a number of, of really good carriers here. Um, so, and actually it can actually even apply in this process as well. So, yeah. and we can customize these, um, for advisors who would like to have this maybe on their own website. Um, these can be customized for, uh, advisors who work with E4 insurance services and meet a, a, a production 
level with us that we can provide this as well as uh, video quotas and other things that can help help drive that business and make life simple in as we're talking about in Life Insurance Awareness Month. Thanks, Jeremy. I thought that was good. Yeah. Any other questions or? Do we have any questions from anybody? So how, what was the Latin word again? Uh, the Temp tempest, tempest fugit. Tempest. Memento mori. Yeah, tempest fugit. What do clients say when you bring that up in a, in a meeting? Yeah, uh, Charles is asking, can you spell it? Uh, can I spell it? Yes. T-E-M-P-U-S. Uh, I'm cheating right here. F-U-G-I-T. Tempest Fugit. Memento is M-E-M-E-N-T-O. Fugit. Or Memento and then Mori is M-O-R-I. Yeah. Uh, you know, quite, I mean, yeah, they... I think, I mean, people are aware. I mean, I, I find it fascinating, honestly, in the life insurance business that we talk about that kind of thing a lot. I mean, you're talking about estate planning, you're talking about, you know, end of life sort of stuff, long-term care, anything like that. It's like, so, I mean, you don't bring it up in a weird way, but it's, it's no, a fact no. of life. Yeah. Okay. We, um, someone spelled it here, Tempest Fugit. Memento, memento more, right? Mm -hmm. It almost sounds like you're going to start singing uh, when you it's say good. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so how does the conversation go uh, when you have that conversation about, you know, the life, uh, you know, L-I-F-E or making that decision from your deathbed, uh, how much do you want to leave? Where do you find the the clients, how do they respond to that? Well, I mean, I think one of the things that I, you know, I oftentimes find is like people, people want to get really, really into the calculation and figuring out, okay, well, this is exactly what I need. But I think that it, it brings it, I mean, it's, it's, it brings the emotions into it a little bit and the realization that um, there's more to this decision than just the numbers that we sort of have on the page. And bringing the reality of that to the, to the, you know, to the meeting or to the plan can make a big difference. Um, obviously, we use stories a lot and it's based, you know, it's trying to kind of drive that emotional side of it. But, I mean, that's reality. It's real. And we all know people who have been in similar situations. And, I mean, you think a young person who, you know, unfortunately passes away everybody's sad, but you go to the, you go to the funeral. And one of the first questions people ask is, I hope the family's taken care of. And I think that, um, you know, this is a way of sort of bringing that to the, to the real, uh, to the forefront of somebody's mind. You know, I, my brother is an engineer. I love, uh, and hate working with engineers because they're all like, they put the Excel spreadsheet together and they figure out all of the, I think that, you know, bringing something like this to them is really helpful for the really analytical because it's like, okay, we can analyze this to death, but uh, in the end, something happens to you tomorrow. What do you think? Are you are you are you ready or not? Yeah, Tom Walsh is a question, um, and that is needs versus wants. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean. I mean, the calculator kind of just goes, I mean, I think it kind of, you know, when you start looking at a calculator, you start thinking about it in terms of um, what are the basic needs? Um, you know, the income replacement is something that is obviously like a big piece of it for, for a lot of younger people. Um, you know, once you start getting into a little bit older clients, you might be asking more of like the want questions in some ways. But, um, you know, even, even a young person, it's like, um, we, we talk about like the standard of living, you know, we want to keep up their standard of living. And it's like, I don't know if, uh, you know, I've, I've had farmers and ranchers out here who are kind of, you know, pull themselves up by the bootstrap sort of people. And they're like, well, she'll figure it out. And, uh, sometimes you want to jump across the table and kind of throttle the guy. Cause it's like, I don't think we really realize, uh, 
what you're saying. I mean, yeah, you might think it's a want that she has, you know, a million dollar check or a $2 million check coming to her. But I mean, give that thing 10 years and a million dollars doesn't last you too long. I mean, especially with young kids. So I don't know if that kind of answers the time or not, but. I've been in those meetings where I'm just buying insurance for, for the next guy that's going to be coming in. And I, I, I look at her with, you know, two runny nose babies in her arms and, and uh, uh, the kids running around half clothed and dirty and the house in disarray and the sink full of dishes. And I, I want to look across the table sometimes at the, the husband and say, really, mm-hmm. really? Yeah. Um, Cause that's, that's what you're, you're leaving your plan to. That's pretty bad. I had a call this week, Jeremy, speaking of life insurance awareness month. Um, and it, it came from a client, uh, he's down in Florida, he and his wife, um, and, and, uh, he's the brother-in-law to, to one of our, our team members here at E4. And, uh, we have, he and his wife insured and, um, they have good coverage, but he had a friend. There's a group of, of friends that they have. Um, one of them was just a picture of health. He was a firefighter. He was 50 years of age. And he passed away a few weeks ago uh, of a massive heart attack and left his family. And it was a shock to everybody. But was what was most shocking to Dan was he called me up and he was, he was really ticked because the only life insurance that his friend had was $150,000 of group coverage that the fire department had paid on. And how much different would it have been Dan's word, if he had 10 times that, if he had a million five, the, mm-hmm. what would that have been for the family and how cheap it is when you look at the cost of coverage, how, how inexpensive it is to make sure that there's adequate insurance protection. And so I shared with him this video quoter and the fact that he, could, he wanted to go out to his friends. Now, he's not a licensed insurance advisor, but he wanted to make sure his friends ran the calculator and looked at getting a proper amount of coverage so that they, they wouldn't be in that same situation that their friend left his, his family with. So um, great reminder, we have really great tools at E4 Insurance Services to make this a simple process. And really thank you today, Jeremy, for sharing uh, some, some good reminders on life, how to calculate that need and Life Insurance Awareness Month, uh, keeping that uh, discussion going with our clients. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, great share. I've opened up the line. If there's any other questions, we can take those. But today's brew is being recorded and will be posted on the E4 Insurance Services blog on our website, um, as well as our YouTube page. Uh, now for the, for, uh, the uh, giveaway, Jeremy, can you pick a number between 1 and 21? Uh, 16. 16. Who's the winner? Chuck Kakaras. So congratulations. You'll be getting a, a coffee card, a, a gift card, as well as some CE uh, credit opportunities. We appreciate you being here. Uh, next week on The Brew, we're pleased to welcome Jack Levy. He is a business solution specialist with Principal. Uh, he is an expert in non-qualified deferred compensation planning. He's going to open your eyes to help companies uh, do a better job there. Apologize for that. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll get some great information on non-qualified deferred comp and how, how to help business owners um, in their business from 3Ds, death, disability, and departure. So thank you, friends. Thank you for joining us on The Brew. We'll see you next week on The Brew.